Um, when he introduced this film to a, a bunch of press people, he said that back in 2010 when Emma Donoghue's book was in the New York Times bestsellers list and you were looking for material that, um, you know, that it was a long shot to kind of approach her and you, yeah. you wrote a letter. I know he sort of joked about the fact that some people said it was a 10-page letter, but it was a five-page letter. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to think now in that letter, would, would it have been a very strong feeling already that you knew this is the film that you were going to make or was it just that you had this hunger to at uh, least go for it? It was... The, it was uh, this was it was an absolute certainty that I would that I was dying to make it I mean there was no kind of it wasn't like I was thinking about it and wanted to start talking to her I really really wanted to make it but I didn't think I would get to make it I mean I'd made when I wrote that letter because that was 2000 yeah it was like late 2010 or 2011 I don't think what Richard did had had come out even so I'd made Adam and Paul and Garage which are two films I'm very proud of but they didn't make a ripple in the States, which was the world that she was operating in. And she was, she had on her hands this, you know, big property that lots of people were interested in turning into a film, albeit with a certain amount of trepidation because it's a hard thing to, a hard book to, to adapt. But yeah, so I wrote that letter more in hope than expectation. But that was sort of, that in a way I felt sort of quite liberated writing the letter. I thought, I'm just gonna tell her exactly what I think about the novel, about how I would do it, and about how it shouldn't be done. Because, which is kind of like a spoiler, I wanted to spoil other people's pitches as much as make my own. So I said, you know, I said, so it was full of things like, people are gonna suggest blah, but you know, here's why that would be a terrible idea. And in the end- Michael Bay, I'll never forgive you for what you said. Yeah, about I know, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, so You had yeah. that explosion, it was the CGI. Was perfect, you had a yeah. perfect explosion to get out of that room and you ruined it. Um, so yeah, so that was it, and then luckily she 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 liked the letter, and that was kind of the beginning of it. It's always a long commitment when uh, for you know when you when you have first an idea for a film or you, you you start and it can take years to put together. I know you spent kind of two years at first base with Emma, where you worked on the script together, yeah. and, and 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 wonderfully she she made a, a fantastic screenplay, which isn't always the case when a, a novelist adapts adapts their own work. Mm -hmm. In those two years, I mean, was it a, was it a, was it a sort of like we're having a date and we're not sure if we're going to get married or we're not going to get engaged or, or, or was it a sort of a given? I think we knew we were going to make it at that point. From, from, yeah. from early on when we started working together, it was a very good relationship. So, and it was always progressing. And the good thing was, you know, we were sort of, we were aware working with Ed um, and the people that we work with in Film 4 and, and other people's interest, we, we, we thought that when we wanted to, the financing would come. But we just took our time in that process because you, that's, you know, the way I tend to work with Ed is that we develop in a very small unit, which is Element Pictures and up until now, and usually in a great way, Film 4, which covers the development. You don't have to go and get loads of partners and, 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 and people who all want to dig in. You just work with that very small unit of people who are very respectful of each other. And then when you've got something that you think is good, you go out to the world and say, do you want to join in on this? Not, do you want to come into the tent and tell us how to make it? You know what it is at that point. So I think, so those, that period when we were working together, we were just working towards the moment when we felt right to go out. It's a, it's a $12 million budget, I think, 49 yeah. days shoot. You're mainly in, in, in a Toronto, at their Pinewood yeah. Studios there. Now, the idea that, that what, what's wonderful in the book and obviously then in the film, it's the idea that it approaches the next day, like just after the happily ever after, yeah. just after. So we don't want to give too much away, but that idea that you're going into the, the realm of, of what happened next kind yeah. of thing. But was it, therefore, like from your point of view, was, was this, I don't know, given the, the constraint of the, of the set that you had yeah. the, and, and, and also the, the emotional um, kind of difficulty of it, I mean, was it an incredibly tough shoot or, or, or no, did you was find yourself? Really, it was a really, um, it was a really rewarding shoot and it was a pretty, it was a, in terms of the relationships between the people working, which is always the thing that determines what a shoot feels like. No matter how bad or difficult the conditions are, say, or the material, if it's dark. Um, and and this, this film has both. It has, it has light and dark. But it's the relationships between the people working that determine the, the, whether a shoot is, is pleasurable or not, or, or you know, civilized or not. And this was a great one. Like, it just, everybody was, I didn't, there were no sort of, there were, there were no um, like uh, tensions. There was all the usual, it was, it's always really hard. I mean, making a film is very hard. And this, working with a little boy 
every day. It's all very hard, but actually it was a pretty joyful thing. We felt we were doing good work. Everybody felt they were doing good work. That's what determines whether you enjoy something or not. You know, I, I, I know from experience, I know from talking to other people, sometimes the films which on the surface are the, you know, f like the funniest, uh, most madcap, like you think, oh my God, they must have had such a blast doing that. And everybody comes away, you know, 10 years older, hating each other, never talking again. That, you know, it, so what, so it's, the material itself, because you're in the process, you're making something. It's the making part, mm. you know? You're not in, you know, it, that's the brilliant thing about film. You're not in that room. You, we are, in fact, shooting in a tiny room. Then you're walking off and having conversations, and it's in the putting together that the, 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 the sort of the true thing emerges eventually. Well, yeah, I think a lot of films, as, as much as, you know, the, the book is wonderful and your, your work is wonderful, that, that casting thing is so crucial and great, great, you know, heavyweights around in the supporting cast like John Allen and William H. Macy and so forth. But obviously Brie Larson uh, as, as Joy is, is amazing in this. And then uh, Canadian actor uh, Jack, um, Jacob Tremblay, uh, Tremblay. That, that idea of, 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 as you said, working with kid can be difficult and, and you had an eight, hour, eight hours a day, I think, limited with them. Uh, with with all five hours really of oh, actual five. in front of camera right. time, yeah, very tough. But, um, but at one point you had to make him scream and, and you have children, so you know how to do this, don't you? you yeah, kind of, but I wasn't allowed to do what I do with my own children, obviously. Ah, right, just, you know, right, no, no twisting. You know, I couldn't stick a pin in or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, no, it's, it, it was early, early on when, when he felt, I suppose, that self-consciousness that anybody would feel on a, on a full-size film with all the crew and everything around, but he's, you know, little kid, and he had to really shout at, at Brie, and he just, you could feel he just, he was avoiding it, he was just off, off, you know, somehow not right that day, and then he eventually whispered, I don't want to shout, because shouting's rude, and, and I like her, you know, which was really sweet, and then you realize you're, you know, you suddenly remember that you're dealing with this tiny boy, mm. and then we just got the whole crew in to, to have a shouting competition, and, you know, uh, like sometimes, so sometimes the things you needed to do with him were just, were just making him feel okay, just making it fun. Um, but the, what you discovered with him when you get past all those strange, you know, not strange, but those childish, um, uh, d you know, um, awkwardnesses or whatever, was that there's a real actor in there. Because, you, you know, much as I sometimes had to, we would go word by word occasionally or line, you know, really throwing line reads at him and he'd throw it back and I'd throw it and he'd throw it until we had it. Sometimes he would just run and it would be, a, the scene would be exquisite, perfect, the timing would be perfect, his choices of when to look and when not to look at her, his, just his natural control of his body when he's pretending, you just realise, yeah, this is a gifted kid. Uh, I should finish by asking about the fact that you got three Golden Globe nominations, it looks very, very likely that you'll get Oscar nominations. Does that whole process of, of you know, the, the, the you know, high-fiving and, and, and doing lots of interviews and all that, is that something that you're, you're kind of thinking, okay, that's fine, I know it's part of the gig, and, or, or does, is there a little bit of dread? In it's a bit of both, really, because it's, it's really, you're looking at six months of your life. I mean, that's nearly from, from first festival to the end of all that stuff, five, six months of which I've mostly been on the road. Um, and you go a little bit mad. If you do this day after day after day after day, talking about the film, um, it, it becomes extremely unreal. And, and, and you're not doing any of your own normal work, right? And I think it's, I had no idea of how intense it was. And I've heard people say before, you know, a certain actor, they won't campaign. And you think, what? How ridiculous! I mean, what's what's not to you know what's to be so upset about being flown around in nice airplanes, mm. going into nice hotels and talking about yourself to people who like your film? You know, that's heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It's really um, it's it's relentless. And plus, I have got small kids, so uh, it's been really hard on the family. And so I wasn't expecting it to be like this. I thought it was just going to be a slightly more intense version of what I would do on any other film, which is do interviews at the point when it comes out, do a few Q and A's, go to a few festivals. But it's a big part of your life. And the next time I do it, if I ever get to do it again, I'd move the whole family over to the States. Right. Because, right. because that's the only way I'd, ever, I'd see them. I think my time is probably up. So I might, maybe I'll take another 10 minutes because I feel kind of comfortable now. <laughs> no, no. Great to talk to you, kid, as usual. Lovely to yeah. see you, brilliant. Yeah.